Yes, hello, welcome everybody. It's Chris here from the Ministry of Dice and I'm back again today with another one of my video presentation thingamadoodads. And in this video today, I'm going to talk about the idea when building teams in Dice Masters, do you pivot or do you optimise? Now don't worry if you don't know what I mean by those terms, I'll go on to define those in a moment. But before I do, this video is dedicated to Stephen. Hi Steve. So Steve is a listener to the Ministry of Dice podcast. He regularly sends me emails with combo ideas and team brews that he's working on. Steve, you are a brewing machine i'll drop you a note back soon uh, but hopefully this will be mm, some acknowledgement of the fact that i've been getting those emails and a little note in one of steven's emails made me think about this idea of pivoting or optimizing. and i thought you know what this is a challenge that i find when building teams it's something that i don't necessarily get right when it comes to building and playing my dice masters brews and i thought it might make a nice little video to explore this idea and be a lovely little addition to my series my having a brew series where i'm talking about my efforts to become a better more competitive dice masters player before I do though, just a quick thank you to those who are subscribed to the channel and an extra big thank you to those who take the time to give us a like on the videos and to get into conversation with me in the comments section. Love you guys, you absolutely, you really are, I've said it before, the best audience in the world, hands down platinum grade community uh, and i'd like to encourage you to carry on doing so and if you're not already subscribed then you know hit that button you know the routine every youtube video asks you to do it it's in the bottom corner you know it'd be really nice if you subscribed so you don't miss out on my videos and you make me feel good by giving me a big overinflated number that speaks to my ego all right Okay then, with all that said then, let's get into this idea of pivot and optimise. And so I suppose if you're new around here or it's not, these aren't terms that you're familiar with, I better get into them and kind of uh, break them down and talk about why they present a challenge to team building. Uh, so let's begin with pivot. Now pivot, largely speaking, in a very broad sense, is about including several win conditions on your team. And the terminology pivot is about this idea of I've got these options and during gameplay I can pivot to one of these alternative win conditions. And there's a couple of reasons why you might want to have pivots on your team. So you may find that your, uh, your one of your win conditions is a very expensive dice to buy, uh, your ramp falls through for a variety of reasons, and so you've got kind of a plan B and a plan C there that are cheaper alternative win conditions that you can turn to. They might not be quite as explosive, they might not be quite as efficient at winning you the game, but they can still win you the game. Or there may be a control piece in the meta that's hugely disruptive to one of you one of your win conditions, so in order to chess around that, what you do, rather than trying to outplay the control piece you just put another win condition on your team that would help you uh, get around it or is a different approach to winning the game that that piece of control can't affect so you've got you know two options depending on what you're facing on the other side of the team or it might just be your style you might just like having lots of damage dealing opportunities in your team and you're the kind of person who likes to just fill up a team with with just aggro -y stuff and just likes to go for it and have tons of you know in this instance i'm going to try and win like that and in this instance i'm going to win like that so there's lots and lots of reasons why you might want to pivot um but of course the downside of that is that when it comes to team building it it pressures the limits of the team construction you know you've got 10 cards available to you to make it work and it's just kind of you know that decision making process when it comes to team building and how you go about uh, factoring in pivot options can be a bit of a challenge let me give you an example that's very close to my heart i'm going to talk about the collector nobby list so this is uh, anyone who's a regular listener to the podcast or a regular viewer of these videos will know is possibly my absolute favorite combo played this team a ton uh, before it rotated out and uh, all sorts of different kind of variations on the archetype but the main kind of core of this is using the collector's gain text there that lets you once per turn pay the purchase cost of an unpurchased character dice minus two to field the character die at level one and then return it to the card at the end of the turn and then Norman Osborne who does a point of damage to your opponent for each villain character in the field both sides of the table and because of the collector's gain text you can pay a single fist to field that Norman Osborne on level one and in order to really maximize that damage what you'd often see in, in collector nobby team lists and my team lists were no different is this card here this action the danger room which gives all character dice uh, the villain affiliation <clears throat> so very simple straightforward i love direct damage strategies i like the collector's kind of janky combo ness of it you get the collector out in the field you then start spamming fists in your turn and in your opponent's turn 
to field those Norman Osborns to deal that damage for each villain, but then you use the Danger Room in your turn to really ramp up the villain count so that it, there's more damage going across the table. Uh, it took me to top three at the UK National Championship in 2018. Uh, it's It was the kind of central combo win condition piece to Arjo O'Neill's World Championship team in 20. 20- 18, uh, 18 also I want to say 18 Arge correct me if I'm wrong was it the year before maybe um, so it, it was a popular combo it was competitive and it worked a charm however there were lots of control pieces out in the meta that could really interfere with that Norman Osborne is a when fielded win condition so you had Madame Mass there Nefarious Scheme uh, this is just one example I've picked to illustrate for the purposes of this video and Madame Mass reads while Madame Mask is active your opponent's when fielded abilities do not trigger. Uh, you also had uh, some other examples like uh, Bishop, the rare Bishop from the X-Men first class set, uh, Butterfly Effect. He cancelled all uh, direct damage. You had things like um, Wonder Woman, Reflections, who also, like Madame Mask, cancelled when fielded abilities when they happen. So a very significant and key set of of control options that would eliminate that Norman Osborne win condition. But you're already kind of focusing your team on your villain count. So uh, Arge is a great example of this. His world championship team, he just factored in a pivot. And on his team list, you'll find Black Canary, Flower Shop Owner. Three cost fist, it's a Justice League character, admittedly, but Black Canary reads, when Black Canary attacks, villain character dice cannot block until the end of the turn. So he's placed a pivot on his team but it kind of neatly you know that that kind of team building challenge that pressure on your card and dice count is minimized because it kind of rolls in it leans nicely into the overall win condition the main win condition that is the collector knobby combo so you've got the danger room on there to make all your opponents dice villains and then you've got the black canary as an alternative option so all right i can't collect her in my knobby my Norman Osborne don't call me Gobby card because your Madam Mask is out um, to, to deal that damage to you through his direct damage option. So what I'm going to do is I'm collecting in Black Canary and then I'm going to attack with her with my dice. Um, and because you're, all your guys are villains, you can't block her and whatever additional dice I attack with. And what you often find on collector teams as well, just in terms of that kind of pivot synergy there, is Cree Captain, Lost Purpose. So Cree Captain, Lost Purpose, his global, pay the two fists once per turn, the next character die you purchase, his turn costs three less, is often on collector nobby teams to help you strive for that five cost collector early doors. But also his additional game sets gives loads of added value because he's the Cree Captain, he gets plus one attack and plus one defense for every active villain character die. So with the Black Canary, with the danger room as a pivot option, he's already on the team as part of your ramp solution, uh, but he also benefits from the danger room. He also benefits from the Black Canary's ability to make villains unable to block, and you can make him massive using that huge villain count um, that you've just created with the danger room. So pivoting is a challenge when it comes to team building because as i say it really pressures your choices in terms of how i construct the team um you know am i going to have sufficient ramp and if my ramp solutions dominating too much of my choices then am i going to have room to place another pivot in there or an alternative win condition that's perhaps you know if i've got a direct damage win condition as my main condition am i going to uh, factor in a a combat win condition like this example here that I've just given you you know it, it's really challenging to decide on pivots unless you've got efficient pivots or pivots like this example that kind of rolls into or takes advantage of the same strategy just from a different angle you know or you've got you know Becky Lynch at the moment uh, she's a perfect example of a pivot put her on the team just for the global but then she's a one card win condition in her own right that could you could turn to if if you're desperately in trouble with your main win condition the sad truth there is people are probably turning to a much more quickly anyway i'm not going to get into that that's another video that's another winch for another day um <clears throat> so yeah there's pivot defined there's some reasons why you might want to look at pivoting in your team building and there's just an example of a well built pivot that we've seen at a championship level um that really kind of synergizes well within the team within the context that it's that it's been built around um but yeah you've got to be careful with pivoting you've got to be careful i've certainly built teams with with two two win conditions, two pivots, and kind of found myself saying at the end of the game, I've tried to do too much. 
or I kind of only committed half in on one and half in on the other rather than, you know, playing the table properly and assessing the, the situation right, you know, and that's, if, if your gameplay isn't, you know, if you're not, have the depth of thought like me if you can't process it in the moment necessarily or you do find yourself going half in one and half in another and not really ever actually doing either very well then pivots perhaps aren't the way to go for you uh, and on that note i'll move over to optimize which is probably where i generally find myself moving towards more often when it comes to team building so optimize is the is the converse opposite of pivot this is where you put a single win condition on your team and you just optimize the team with that singular focus of making that win condition work so whereas in a pivot team uh, control pieces in the meta that get in your way or ramp challenges that that may um take place and interrupt your ability to get your win condition together you kind of just look at a plan b or a plan c in an optimized team with no pivots, you would kind of counterplay. You'd look for cards or uh, dice that will allow you to counterplay against the challenges of making your single win condition work. So uh, I've already alluded to this. Why might you optimize? Well, uh, if you're like me and you find yourself doing this kind of half in, half out thing that I described before, then you might want to optimize your team and just go for a single uh, win condition a single focus because that's just e not easier that's the wrong choice of words more comprehensive in terms of your play style and the way that you want to play uh, you might also want to optimize because your play style maybe you're a control player too and therefore you like to use control to counter control uh, and so it's opt an optimized team speaks more to your approach than a pivoted team uh, because you'd rather chess it out in um with removal and control rather than chess it out with a pivot you know so it might be about a play style um or it might just be that you have a real strong leaning a real strong preference towards a particular type of winning the game a particular way of winning the game and therefore uh, when it comes to team building and playing it you're playing to your strengths and optimizing the team to work to those strengths rather than trying to pivot uh, maybe into a space that's not well suited to you and just to kind of revisit pivot for a second there i'm not a great attack step player i find the idea of combat in dice masters very stressful and i get stuck in my own head with it and so that collector nobby team with a black canary sounds great in theory but i get all those kind of oh but then my creed captain and my black widow because they're going through unblocked they're going to go to use my use pile and then i don't know if i'm going to be able to churn through because i'm using clay face creed captain ramp instead of a churny kind of ramp and you know i end up with all this kind of questioning myself and all that self-doubt comes in and you know whereas with an optimized team i'm like all right he's put that out i just need to buy this now to take care of it you know so maybe like me you can only concentrate on one thing at a time i suppose is what i'm saying or um you know, there's an area of the game that you're not great at playing, so in order to play to your strengths, you kind of optimize and lean into the other one. Uh, let me give you an example. So I'm looking at General Nemesis is General Nemesis's team, Dana's team, uh, that recently won the MOD PDM, uh, the Dice Masters event, uh, the Virtual UK Games Expo this year, and his team was a great example of just a fully optimized team that is designed to win and win in one way, and that is with Thor Jormungand's fear. So Thor is a six cost bolt, so he's expensive, and it says while Thor is active, when you feel the character die, deal two damage to target character die or player, and then he's got a global there where you can pay a bolt, and once per turn you can purchase an action die with a discount of two. Is it two or three? It's two, isn't it? It's a bit, a bit, my screen's a bit far away. I obviously need glasses. Uh, and what Dana did is he focused solely on making that win condition work. I mean, I suppose you could argue that there's some, some pivot opportunities based around the kind of stats of the characters and stuff. But largely speaking, Dana said when we spoke to him, interviewed him on the podcast following the, uh, following the win, he said that it was all about kind of driving towards making that Thor work. So everything was optimized towards buying him, getting him out, and then capitalizing on that game text and then protecting it once it was out. So over 50% of Dana's core team was about ramping up to buy the six cost. Fully up to just driven 
entirely into the ramp options that would allow him to get that six cost early doors and out in the field. So we had Clayface there for his global where you can pay a mask and once per turn take a die from your use pile and add it to your reserve pool on any energy face. Just turning one energy into two. He had the Cree Captain there for his global that I mentioned earlier. There was the Intellect Devourer who's got the uh, global there that allows you once per turn to spin a sidekick to an energy face and then he's got the Collector with a global that lets him put a sidekick in the field. So it was all about kind of first turn Turn. buying that Cree captain for the fists then second to uh, and then in your opponent's turn using the collector's global to put a psychic out in the field then in turn two turning that sidekick into energy with the intellect devourer global clay facing in the Cree captain as a double fist so that he had his six purchase cost for the thor boxed off and one to prep and actually just incidentally it's not pictured here but atlas with the fist prep global was on the team as well so all fully optimized to rushing towards that that big six cost but obviously the ramp effort to do that has minimized dana's opportunities to load up with pivots i mean i suppose you could argue clay face could be a pivot i don't think i've ever seen anyone buy a clay face and try and go for that four energy game text intellect devourer is a nice bit of i suppose ground softener if you want to put one out in the field and ping your opponent for every question mark they spend but it was that wasn't the intent it was all about driving towards um that ramp effort to get that six cost so the pivot opportunities are hugely massively reduced here dana had no choice but to optimize at this point so then it becomes about the control the rest of the team were filled up with cards to protect that win condition. Black Widow, Widow's Hunt, two-cost mask, uh, using uh, an energized game text that spins opposing characters down to level one, and then if that character dies already level one, spinning it to energy face. Very popular piece of removal right now because um, those two masks, rolling around energizers, two masks is super useful, especially when you've got a team loaded up with, you know, um, uh, Clayface Globals and the Static Field Global there that I'm about to mention. Drax, the new blob, three cost shield. When fielded, choose an opposing card, cancelling all previous choices. Your opponent may not purchase or field that character until Drax leaves the field zone. And look at his stats, his defense numbers, four, five, six. So you get him out, he's not shifting, and you're cutting off access of your opponent to a card. Got the Static Field there for the pushback global. Pay a mass, remove target, attacking character die from combat. And then confront the mighty, a, a beautiful cheap piece of removal there target character die you control has attack equal to the defense of target opposing character die those two characters die steal damage to each other equal to their attack so just using sidekicks to slaughter things on the other side of the table with big defense numbers that you don't like the look of although now upon reflection that confront the mighty is actually the answer to removing the drax isn't it i'll have to ask dana how he mitigated that problem Anyway, uh, get back, getting back to my examples. Uh, the team is optimised. Dana wants to win with the Thor... Jormungan's fear. He wants to do that direct damage to his opponent by fielding characters. And so he's put a huge optimised effort into the ramp journey to get to that six cost and then to the control effort to protect that six cost and i suppose you could say you know you've we confront the mighty in black widow you could clear a field down and you know thor's no slouch in his stats so there's an opportunity to attack etc etc but that's a lot of hard work it was all about protecting that thor so that he could deliver that damage and use the control pieces that he's got on his card to maneuver around the challenges that he was going to face whether it be opponent attacking him whether it be removing dice that are going to be pests etc etc um so yeah there you go there, there's the two kind of defined with a couple of examples and a few kind of pointers as to why it might be best for you or not so have i come to an answer on that question whether you should pivot or optimize well honestly no, I haven't. I'm much more of an optimised guy. The teams I build are much more singly focused towards one win condition and then I load the team up. I'm a control player. I load the team up with loads of control and removal to help protect that win condition and interfere with my opponent's ability to win the game. But I've seen many, many pivot teams do well in competitive tournaments or even casually, to be fair, and uh, it's certainly an option. So uh, the question you have to ask yourself is what is my play style? What's going to allow me to play to my strengths most? Am I able to pivot effectively? Can I reconfigure my thought processes to go to a different approach? Can I chest it through? Or is the team I'm building, has it got neat pivots, you know, tidy pivots that synergize well and make dual use of some stuff that I'm putting on my team already, as I described with the Collector Nobby and Black Canary example 
uh, using the danger room before. Uh, or are you more like me? You know, your, your concentration is more on one, better focused in one direction, that you don't pivot so well because you find you dip a toe in two and then don't really swim in either waters. Um, so uh, are you better at chessing around using removal and control? And so will it play to your strengths to find a solid win condition that you then can you know, lean into? And uh, now I've I've experienced wins with optimized teams before. I've experienced losses with optimized teams before. But I'm certain. And let us know in the comments below. There are people out there who like to put pivots who equally have experienced wins and losses using pivot teams. So I think there is no easy answer. But hopefully I've pointed out a few kind of key thoughts or key ideas that will help you in your decision making when it comes to team building and playing the game around whether you're a kind of pivot player, whether you're an optimized player, or whether whether you can't be categorized as either and you're able to build teams, you know, drawing upon one or the other as is best fit for the moment. Yeah, there you go. Okay, well, uh, if you did enjoy this video, please do hit the thumbs up. Uh, let us know in the comments below your thoughts around pivot uh, teams that pivot or teams that are just optimised towards one goal, one vision, fried chicken. And uh, I will catch you folks on a podcast, on a video, or on a blog post sometime soon. All right, folks, thanks very much. Oh, check out the videos on the right-hand side of the screen. YouTube thinks you should watch them. Yeah, thanks. Bye.